I moved here from Chicago. I'm, I'm really coming to New York as a Midwestern kid, you know. Got a job at times. I personally couldn't find my way through the West Village without the World Trade Center. I wasn't a really great admirer of the Trade Center architecturally, but I was just one more citizen who relied on the Trade Center just to move around Manhattan. But the main thing the towers gave to me is that as a person living in New York in 9-11, that's when I became a New Yorker. So in their demise, in a way, they sealed a lot of people's identities in New York. We didn't want it that way, but that's the way it happened. On 9-11, James Glantz was an investigative journalist working on the science desk at the New York Times. I was sitting in my kitchen uh, on the Upper West Side, and my mother called me from Iowa and said, the morning programs are saying a plane hit the World Trade Center. And I said, Mom, uh, that's not possible. You know, there's a beacon up there. Uh, it's just not, it's not even a credible possibility. And she said, turn on the TV. So I turned on the television saw that the North Tower was on fire. So I rushed into the office from the Upper West Side down to Midtown. And then as I was rushing past the editorial pod on the science desk, which is where I was at the time, mostly writing about physics, uh, a deputy editor, Laura Chang, pointed to me in the shorthand way you get assignments in the newsroom, and she said, structure. And I knew what that meant. They were thinking, well, on page A23, there'll be a little box that'll say, well, the, the buildings that caught fire today were built in a certain way and had a certain kind of steel structure and the engineer was X. So I started getting some information on that and as I was sitting there, I looked over my shoulder, one building was gone. I almost thought it was an optical illusion or something. It was really only after the second building fell that I realized what we had just seen. They were gone. And then they came to me and said, you have until 6 p.m. and you're going to file a story on what we just saw. Why did the buildings fall that way? And, and I had no idea. When I first saw it, it looked like some kind of, you know, mystical occurrence or something like that. But I was able to talk to engineers who were able to talk me through step by step what probably happened and why what I saw was not something that um, needed any further explanation than the laws of physics. And after a couple of phone calls, I realized the towers themselves really just shuddered and stood after the planes hit them and probably would have stood indefinitely, except the fuel from the planes caught on fire and sort of acted like an accelerant and set multiple floors afire in both structures. Once the fire started, another element of the construction came into play, and that's the floors. The floors were the lateral support, one of the prime reasons a building basically stood. So as the fires burnt, the floors got hotter and hotter, and while well, the steel didn't melt, it got softer and softer. And as that happened, the floors started to sag. And then at one point, there was no more lateral support. They let go. It was like, you know, for a while, it just seemed like the end of the world, you know. And when you went down there afterward, as soon as you passed that veil of smoke and went into ground zero, you felt like you were in some godforsaken place and, and left the earth. You couldn't see New York very well because the smoke was rising around you. It didn't smell like New York. And nothing that you saw looked like anything you'd ever seen in your life. And that just magnified the size of the scar that this whole disaster put on the soul of the United States. And the legacy of that is far greater just because of the catastrophic way it all came down.